Over here in Eastern Africa lies Ethiopia, where for more than 7,000 years, the unconquered Lion of Judah has watched over the destinies of dusky Abyssinians and Nubians. From Addis Ababa, where Haile Selassie was crowned emperor, it is 3,500 miles by airplane to Morocco on the northwest coast of Africa. For centuries, the highlands of Morocco have been the home of the fierce Berbers, forebears of the Moors who once conquered Spain. But now all is at peace in this country, and we were able to travel around in comfort and safety. We started our trip at the port of Casablanca, and then we drove to the town of Marrakech, better known as Morocco. Marrakech, which lies in a great plain on the northern slopes of the snow-clad Atlas Mountains, was founded 900 years ago and was considered at one time to be the greatest city of Islam. It was then surrounded by massive flame-colored walls, sections of which still remain. The beautiful square tower of the Ketubia Mosque still stands as a memorial to the constructive genius of the early Moors. The great open square called Jamal Fna is the favorite gathering place of the natives. Morocco's general population is of a very mixed and turbulent kind. Through the centuries, Marrakech has become a veritable melting pot. Berbers, Arabs, Moors, Jews, and Negroes from the Sudan have married and intermarried so indiscriminately that origins are hard to trace and types are even harder to define. There are so many that can neither read nor write that the public scribes are all kept busy. But their superior knowledge does not include modern methods. First, the scribe takes a piece of bamboo, which he painstakingly whittles into the shape of a writing pen. Meanwhile, his customer patiently waits and gathers his thoughts. Who knows, perhaps this may be a tender love message or just a note telling Dad that he's broke again. The scribe is writing in Arabic. That is why his pen moves along the line from right to left. Marbles, a game that belongs to the kids of the entire world. Its origin is lost in the mists of antiquity. In the British Museum, they exhibit marbles that were used by Egyptian and Roman children more than 2,000 years ago, just as these youngsters of Marrakech are knuckling down and shooting their claws in their alleys. Morocco leather is used universally, and right here in Marrakech is where it is made out of goat skin, which are tanned a beautiful yellow or a brilliant red. This harness maker is busy turning out a belt, which he is sewing together with heavily waxed silk. And is this young man proud of his new belt? Turn around there, son. Let's take a look at the back. Yeah, that's right. To make their wonderful dyes, they pound pomegranates and other vegetable matter in mortars. The silk industry is an important one here, and this is how they do their dyeing. All these operations take place in the open street. Morocco is sometimes visited by that terrible and most ancient of plagues, one that the ingenuity of man has not yet been able to eradicate, the plague of the all-devouring locust, the same plague that was visited upon a stony-hearted pharaoh in the days of Moses. The locusts you see here are nymphs. They are young, their wings have not yet grown. Once they are able to fly, nothing can stop them. They breed in dry, arid soil and have to go hunting for their food. They travel in such enormous swarms that they even shut off the sunlight from the land over which they fly. When they alight, they strip the earth bare of all vegetable matter. They eat every blade of grass, every leaf on every tree or bush, leaving utter desolation in their wake. Even when young and wingless, they do not scatter. They follow a definite direction. This permits the natives to dig long ditches across their line of march. The ditches are filled with water and the locusts drown. 
Another way of getting rid of them is to drive them toward big heaps of dry straw in which the young locusts try to hide. The straw is then set on fire. As far as we can discover, the Arabs are the only ones that have found a use for locusts. They boil them in salt water and then dry them in the sun. They taste like stale shrimps, but the Arabs enjoy eating them. And by the way, did you ever eat a stale shrimp? No, this is not a field of pussy willows. These are land snails clinging to the stalks from which they eat the leaves. So you see, they are vegetarians. Unlike the water snails, which are not good to eat, these Moroccan land snails are highly prized as a delicacy by gourmets who call them escargot. They are carefully gathered by hand and taken to a central station. Here they are sorted according to size and quality. But with typical oriental nonchalance, the idea seems to be that when you work with snails, you work at a snail's pace. When sorting is done, the escargots are placed in small crates for exportation to France and Italy, but the larger shipments are made to the United States. Here comes a truckload of Moroccan snails, shipped by an Italian exporter for French consumption. As you enter a restaurant in Marrakech, you keep your turban on your head, but you leave your shoes at the door. Just a good old Moroccan custom. If they don't have chairs, they just squat tailor fashion on cushions. And now we're all set for the meal. That's goat's meat, served on an earthen platter with a straw bonnet. True to oriental custom, the moor breaks his bread. He never cuts it. First, he must be sure that the sauce is up to standard. And so he dunks. After all, it's the sauce that makes the dish. Here's a practical demonstration of the old saying, fingers were made before forks. And now a good drink of wine to keep the goat down. No finger bowls in Marrakech. Probably because it takes more than a finger bowl to get the goat off one's hand. So an attendant ceremoniously brings in a large brass bowl and a cake of soap. The tea kettle supplies the water. Then they dry their hands with the same cloth that served as a community napkin during the meal. The proceeding is not very aesthetic, of course, but it seems practical. Now comes the all-important wind-up to the meal, the ceremony of tea-making. First, a little boiling water, just enough to open the tea leaves. Then a bunch of mint is crammed into the teapot. Now two cones of sugar, and finally some hot water. There, that will do. Morocco has many other interesting sights and customs. Someday, we will visit the humble tillers of the soil in the upper reaches of the Atlas Mountains. We'll meet more of its interesting people and investigate other industries. It's well worth a return visit.
Until then, Allah be with you. Thank you.